So the winning run is at second base with two out, three and two to Mookie Wilson. Little roller up along first, behind the bag, it gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. Oh, yeah. No Mets fan or Red Sox fan or many baseball fans will never, ever forget that. And the man who hit that ground ball uh, that went through uh, Mr. Buckner's legs uh, to give the Mets game six in the 86 World Series, forcing a game seven, which the Mets went on to win, uh, we'll never forget it either. We welcome in Mookie Wilson, the author of Mookie, Life, Baseball, and the 86 Mets. Mookie, great to talk to you, sir. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Now, I know you don't remember. Uh, I was uh, covering the Mets at that time uh, for WABC Radio, and I was there and in Boston and the whole thing, and I was I was there in spring training with the punches and the drugs and the, the good and the whole thing. What a, I mean, wow. I mean, the, the 108 win season um, and the World Series. First of all, talk about at any time did you stop and think, man, I feel sorry <laughs> for Bill Buckner. Oh, no, it was a great season, but um, at no point did I ever felt sorry um, for Bill. I mean, you know, because it's what, you know, it's what we do. I mean, we play baseball and we, we make plays and we miss plays and we make mistakes. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that was just another error. You know, I think the um, situation with the two, claim, two teams and, and the stage that it happened, really magnified it more than anything else but um but if you're sorry for it no ne uh, that was never the case and of course you guys went on to win game seven but you know before you got to that point uh the nlcs and mike scott and you know game six and some call it the greatest game ever jerry eisenberg of the star ledger wrote a book called the greatest game ever played and i remember len berman and i went down we thought the game was over you guys were down ninth inning uh, if i'm not mistaken you tied it up three three and um, once we got down there, Len and I said, well, we're not going to go up. It'd probably be over in an inning. And the 10th and the 11th and the 12th until the 16th inning when you guys won the NLCS. Uh, that was a, I mean, it, it described the feeling there. Well, you know, in my opinion, I, that was definitely the, the greatest game I've ever been involved in. I mean, it was just a, a phenomenal game. Uh, talking about ups and downs. I mean, this game had everything, you know, excitement. It had a drama. It had disappointment. You know, letdowns. I mean, you know, it was it was unbelievable. Normally, you can see that maybe in like a basketball game, <laughs> but yeah, in a right. baseball game, you just, don't, <laughs> you just don't see that type of drama. Um, so it was definitely one of the greatest games I've ever been a part of. And um, I, I tell you, if you didn't have a heart attack. <laughs> that game, you probably don't live a long time. It's just all right. And of course, you avoided a game seven and Mike Scott again, so it was very, very, uh, very important on many levels. I, I mean, there's so much I want to talk about with you, and there's such so little time. You you grew up, and you, you grew up uh, in South Carolina, and humble beginnings, and your dad taught you the game, and your dad also instilled uh, faith in, in into you, correct? Oh, yes. I'm a, my father was a, a very devoted Christian, and um, you know, as much as playing ball was part of the family, uh, you know, tradition, um, going to church is mandatory. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, I don't feel like it today or whatever, you, you went to church. And um, that's the one thing that he instilled in us very early. And um, it, it just kind of, that, that kind of stuff just don't go away. It stays with you. I was going to say that had to help you. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it had to help you as, as chaos was breaking out at times all around that Mets team, both before that, during that, and after that. Well, it is no question. Now, I think people have this, you know, this this image that you know ball players live these carefree lives and it's never any adversity, you know, you know, other than what they see on the field. But there are a lot of pressures, you know, that that goes along with the profession. And if you're not deeply rooted, uh, you know, and you know, if you're not deeply rooted and and have the faith to overcome certain things that you know that will confront you. You know, you will fall down, and um, you know it definitely made me stronger. It definitely, you know, helped me through all that adversity, and there was a lot, you know, disappointments, and you, you need something stronger than, you know, hits and runs and and, and the averages. You need something very strong, and, and faith really did it for me. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, at, at the '86, you know, in those days, right after you won the championship, you went to see the president, and I was lucky enough to fly with the team on the plane to the Rose Garden and, and, and got to stand there while you guys, you were there, I'm, I'm sure, but some guys weren't there. 
I mean, they were, you know, obvious as conspicuous by their absence. There was no uh, Dwight Gooden. Uh, there was no um, uh, Daryl Strawberry. And I remember uh, Howard Johnson on the team said, you know, Sparky Anderson told us when we won at Detroit, you got to go to this because you never know if you'll ever have another opportunity to do it again. How, how, what, what memories do you have of that? Well, you know, to be honest, um, during that situation when they had that trip, I, I was one of the guys that really did. I didn't make that trip. Oh, you didn't? You know, I was going to say because I couldn't remember yeah. you being on the plane, but I, I just assumed that you were. But because I knew Strawberry and Gooden did not, why didn't you go? Well, no, I didn't do quite great. I probably wouldn't have been missing that quite. <laughs> you, know, <very> <laughs> but it was, you know, it was. Um, I think it was a family issue or something. That I okay. didn't make. Fair enough. Make yeah. That trip, um, but uh, it it was just something. I think we had something already planned or, or whatever, and. Um, um, there was something serious. It was something serious I would remember. Right, right, right. I, I remember not making the trip, and uh, they were telling me we were going, but I, I wasn't aware that the other guys weren't there until I heard it maybe like the next day. Yeah. So. I, and, 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 you know, it's uh, baseball has changed so much, Mookie, and the problems have changed uh, uh, to a great extent. Um, when you look at the game now, uh, you know, first of all, you see much bigger, bulkier players, and, of course, we yeah. all know about – Steroids. We know about the drug accusations in the NFL, and uh, you know we know about the greenies that used to be in major league clubhouses. So w when you look at the game as you played it in the game now, um, how would the '86 Mets fare, fare against uh, you know the, the team, the, the the Boston Red Sox that won the championship uh, you know uh, last year? Well, first of all, the, the game has changed. I, I think the culture of the game has really changed, you know, dramatically, um, and I, I think the culture of the game by it changing the way it has, has really kind of, um, you know, opened the door for guys to be bulkier, you know, to be, you know, stronger, you know, as to where when um, I was coming through the game, you know, it was all about, you know, speed was a big part of the game. But that's no longer the case now. And um, But if you're asking how would the team have handled the, the Red Sox, you know. Of, of, yeah, maybe, of, maybe the 86 Mets against the 2013 Red Sox instead of the 86 <laughs> Red Sox. But, you know, that's one question I think if you're asking anybody, you know, you like to think that your team was the best team. And, uh, you know, I, I, I tend to think that we would definitely, you know, have the upper hand because we had a lot more to offer, you know, to that team. You know, I, I think that overall our pitching was better from top to bottom. We had four legitimate starters on that team we didn't rely on one pitcher you know as a matter of fact our A's probably didn't didn't throw very well in that series you know and, but we had two, three other guys that were just awesome guys and our bullpen was second to none we had power we had speed we had good defense so yeah I think if you go top to bottom we think that our team was definitely a better team and Mookie you know the game has changed you know now you got a pitcher if a pitcher pitches six innings it's it's considered a success and of course Mariano Rivera is you know the greatest reliever of all time but to be fair Goose Gossage who's also in the Hall of Fame you know for instance and, and many of the others Eckersley whatever they, they got lots of their saves pitching two and two plus innings maybe sometimes three innings well a big game, I, I think you have to look at the culture of the game and how the game has changed to now more specialized positions you know, guy specializes in the, the, the sixth and the seventh inning. Is that good or is that bad, do you think? <laughs> I'm a little bit of a traditionalist when it comes to baseball. And, you know, I I don't I, – I can't say whether it's good or bad. It hasn't hurt the game, but I think in terms of comparing ball players, it makes it's very it tough. difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's very, very difficult to do that. And, and, of course, then I would assume you're with me and you don't care for instant replay. I'm not a big advocate of the instant replay. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm one of the guys that's willing to live with the mistakes. <laughs> you know, the human, you know, the umpires make mistakes. They're, they're going to make mistakes. I just believe that you should hold them accountable for what they do. Well, I guess some people say, well, that's what the instant replay does. Well, I don't think you need the instant replay to hold people accountable right. for their jobs. But, but I think that you look at the games and you say, hey, you messed up here. If you don't do better next time, we're going to have to replace you. Let me, ask you, let me ask you a question real quick. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Donald Sterling forced to sell. He, he's, and now they say the family will sell the, the Clippers in the NBA. In, in the, in the uh, Major League Baseball, I don't know if you're familiar with Bill Maher, the, po the uh, political commentator slash comedian. He owns a, a share of the Mets. And he yes. has said some horrific things using the C word against Republican women. Um, do you think there's a double standard? I, I do think I think that there is always a double standard in this country. 
you know, and because um, I think you look at people in a different light depending on the position that you hold. You know, comedians tend to have a, uh, 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 how you say, it, a free pass. Yeah. You know, and what they say and do because they're, they're they're comedians. This is what they do. You know, but when you have in a position where you um, actually, you know, controls or lead a group of people in an activity that not comedians, and you, you're not as free to open. Openly say and do things. Right. Just ask, ask these kids do things that no people on the street can do. Hey, hey, you Mookie, know, if, if you got, if you come back up to New York for more book stuff, stop by. We'll do a longer segment. It's Mookie, Life Baseball, and the '86 Mets. Thank you, Mookie. Okay, guys. Take care, Mookie Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, on the Steve Molesberg Show.